three years ago, me and her, I thought you were giving them two fingers then. <laughs> me and Maud decided that we needed to change as lives. Mental health was getting too much for me. I couldn't cope and it was rubbing off on Sean and not in a good way. So we used to go walking down by the canal at Stanley Ferry near Wakefield and that always used to calm us down, especially the Guinness in the pub afterwards. It's not true. And we'd owned an Arabo before back in 2004 and it was really good, we loved it, but it wasn't the right time then. But we started to think, well, what about this time? And that started us on a journey, going to see all sorts of boat builders, going to boat shows, looking at used boats, new boats. And eventually, we had this one built, Narrowboat Silver Fox. And we launched it back in May 2019. Awesome and day. It was. Today's a very special day though, because just where that bridge is, is where Narrowboat Silver Fox has passed its first 1,000 miles. What a journey. 800 locks. 140 swing and lift bridges. Wow. That was just on the Leeds and Liverpool. Wow. No wonder my arms and shoulders are bigger than they used to be. <laughs> that's not that's not the swing bridges and locks. <sighs> but it has been a journey in more ways than one. We've covered a lot of miles, but it's also been an emotional journey, especially over the last year. Yes. And it's been a learning curve because boating has changed just in the 16 years since we last did it. It's also been a journey for me of discovery, learning all about the history when we've been presenting the vlogs, all sorts of stories. Shall we have a little look back? Let's have a little look. It all started in May 2019 when Silver Fox first got wet. I don't remember much about launch day. It is a bit of a blur, isn't it? <laughs> it was so stressful because everything had been building up to that point. And I joked that I was hiding behind a hedge, controlling the drone, and I literally was. It really was. I was out of the way, nobody could come and talk to me, and I was just in my own little world controlling the drone. And that's pretty much all I remember. Yeah, it is. There were so many people buzzing about, and once we actually got on the bow, it took it literally took weeks to get everything sorted, didn't it? <laughs> it was like a bomb site. It was. <laughs> what do you remember? What's like the, the most vivid memory you have of, of launch day? Actually hugging Sue. Yeah. We didn't get a lot on video. We got a photograph of it. I was just like really quick with my phone and snapped it. I tell you what I do remember and I regret. Whose idea were it for me to wear that Peaky Blinders hat? <laughs> Every time I watch that vlog back, I'm like, no, Colin, no, Colin. No. <laughs> Why didn't somebody say something? I like, know you don't wear that. <laughs> Our first adventure was down to Liverpool. Yes. And that, it just surprised me so much how nice it was, especially in Saltow Stock. It was a great first adventure. It was. I'm surprised that there's not more boats in there yeah. at any one time. Because it is lovely, it's right in the centre of Liverpool. You've got Albert Dock and Salthouse Dock and all the sites and free electric and water on each jetty. And do you remember when I took the drone up? <laughs> and I didn't I was trying to position the drone to get some good shots of the dock and I didn't realise I was flying it right over the headquarters of Liverpool Police. Naughty. Until the police van started coming round and I'm like, oh no, he's after me. And he came running into the boat with a drone pulling all the blinds down. <laughs> the one thing I hate about that vlog is the music. It says, I was trying to go for that like Mersey beat, Beatles, yeah, you, you know what I mean? Jerry and the Pacemakers type, like 60s rock and roll. And it I just, like it. It won't work for the vlog. I hate it. To this day, I don't like the music. I like it. What's like your iconic moment from that vlog though? When we came out of the tunnel and 
the live birds were right above us. Yeah, it's just like imposing over yeah. us, wasn't it? Yeah. It was absolutely amazing. For me, it was coming through Albert Dock with the sun coming down on the boat and the big wheel in the background and the sun just shining off, off the boat. Yeah, it was so shiny. That's like, whenever I see that shot, it, it takes me back to Liverpool. Yeah. From Liverpool, we set off on, I think, what was to be the biggest adventure we'd done, wasn't oh, it? Oh, God, yes. And we didn't realise at the time. We went back up the Leeds and Liverpool Canal onto the Ruffer branch to Tarleton, ready to do the Ribble Link. Now, we'd researched it. We knew what we were up against, but I don't think we were prepared for <laughs> what happened when those lock gates opened and the incoming tide from the River Douglas was coming straight towards us as we're trying to go into it. Now Pat and Eileen on their boat done working set off out of the lock before us. Yes. And the combination of the incoming tide and their boat created a lot of wash at the back, which we were ploughing straight into. I was literally running up and down the boat. We're sinking, we're sinking. Convinced we were gonna sink. Water was coming in at the front through the front gas lockers. We didn't sink, obviously. No, we didn't. But that's where the title Don't Sink on the Ribble Link came from, because I was convinced we were going to sink. And the thing is, I mean, people were saying that the thumbnail for the video is, is clickbait. Yeah, but it's it like, wasn't. It's not, it's an actual screenshot from the video. And what we didn't know at the time is if we'd waited 30 seconds. And let Pat and Eileen get a little bit further in front. It would actually have been a lot smoother. But then again, we wouldn't have had that brilliant little bit of video. No, we wouldn't. The thumbnail, and we probably wouldn't have had. It wouldn't have been as exciting. Three quarters of a million views on that video. <laughs> but once you get off, the Douglas and onto the River Ribble, even though it's like this wide expanse of water, it's actually a lot calmer, isn't it? Yeah. And yeah, you're still is. fighting the tide a little bit, but then the tide turns and it's pretty slack by the time you get to Savick Brook. Yeah. You know, the farmer's ditch. Which it was. Where you can see the water level dropping <laughs> as you're going by and you can hear the bow. Scraping the bottom. Scraping the mud and the silt at the bottom of the ditch. And it's a relief when you get to that first lock and it's like, water, thank you, <laughs> water. It's tough doing it with a 57 foot boat. I think 62 is the max. Yeah, it is. I think that's what the, the maximum CRT allow. And our next boat is going to be 60 foot, so. Uh. And when you come back out of Savick Brook, back onto the Ribble, I don't think, <laughs> I mean, we were saying we weren't prepared for the Douglas, but. I think we were even less prepared for that. We were, yeah, that were an even stronger current, wasn't it? Yeah, you are told by the CRT staff, don't cut the corner at Savick Brook coming back out onto the Ribble with the tide against you, because the sandbank is quite high there, isn't it? Yeah. And you could ground, and we'd seen photos of boats that had grounded yeah. trying to cut the corner to kind of cut into the tide. <laughs> so, of course, we, being the first boat out, thought we would set an example and not cut the corner and go straight out. <laughs> And of course what happened, we went straight out and the tide got us and off we went. <laughs> so we're trying to, Sean's trying to turn the bow, I'm shouting at him, I'm panicking again. Faster, faster! We've got like 3,000 revs, we've got the bow thrust to go in and the bow, if you remember from the video, is just not moving. We've got full revs, the bow thruster, and the boat is just still in the water. That's when you panic to knock the camera over, isn't it? Yeah, and the, the waves are kind of rocking about at the side of the boat. But we did it. And then all the other boats made it look like a piece of, <laughs> piece e of cake. easy manoeuvring. The Lancaster itself was lovely. Do you remember all the duckweed oh, when we got there? God, yeah, it was like a carpet. But it was, it was like a holiday on the Lancaster Canal. So many GRP cruisers and caravan parks. It yeah. was like being at Reet and Gap. It was. Wasn't it? <laughs> it was. <laughs> on the East Coast. It was a lovely holiday. Your granddad's caravan. Do you remember Hest Bank? I was saying Hest Bank for like a month and it was Hest Bank. Uh, we're here at Hesk Bank. Hest. Hest Bank. Hesk Bank. H-E-S-T. Let me get my book. We're here at Hest Bank. <laughs> you was... kept saying Hesk. H E S K K U. You see, I'm getting it wrong now, aren't yeah, I? Yeah, you are, you're rubbish. And it's Hest Bank. It's H E S T. I thought it was. <laughs> no, I didn't, did I? I thought it was Hest. 
You thought it were Hess? Yeah, that's where Tyson Fury lived, wasn't it? It is. Or his house. We walked past his house, we never even Several knew. times. We could hear like Romany music and like a punch bag going, but we didn't know it was. <laughs> but it was lovely. And I think my favourite from the whole Lancaster was the Loon Aqueducts. That, oh, just that gorgeous. Drone footage. And that is my favourite aqueduct, is the Loon Aqueducts. Yeah. But it's also the first time that I started talking about mental health, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, first time I spoke about mental health as yeah. well. Collins had a meltdown today. He's taken off down the towpath uh, and he's got no shoes on. All he's got on is a t-shirt and a pair of shorts. And he doesn't like to show this side of him. Um, he likes people to see the happy side. So he should be all right. Sean doesn't talk about it much. And some people say we'd like to hear Sean's perspective on what it's like living with me. Not gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> and he doesn't like doing that, because no. he's, he, well, one, he's not comfortable in front of camera, are you? Not really, you but... You see him, he's shaking, he's crying down his leg. <laughs> <laughs> but it was the first time he talked about it. Yeah. And a lot of people seem to react to that, didn't they? Yes, in they a, did. In a good way, you're right there. I'm just turning. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it was it was weird, and I think I was still adjusting to the move. You were because adjusting to the new life, weren't you? Still, we'd, we'd, we'd sold the house, we'd sold my business. Sean gave up his job. I'd run the London Marathon, and we'd moved onto the boat all within the space of literally a week. Yeah, it was, and it was a big adjustment, and I was finding it difficult. But I thought that I found that talking about it actually helped me, and a lot of you seem to pick up on it as well. Yeah. people ask us what is a good canal for starting on and we recommend the Lancaster because there's no locks unless you go down the glass and arm yeah which we did glass and arm glass and arm <laughs> and it lovely it is nice the locks were hard work but down at the bottom is glass and dock you remember the smokehouse we oh. were eating smoked cheese and bacon for like a month we spent far too much money <laughs> we, did. we did we literally spent a whole week shopping budget we did. in there didn't we and I ended up jumping in the dock because Sean had got weed in the bow thruster, yes. so I jumped in the dock. And people were warning me about a giant pike that lives there, and I took it seriously. <laughs> I was like, what's nibbling me foot? <laughs> <laughs> It was like a holiday, wasn't it? Yeah. It, it was like five or six weeks we spent on the Lancaster with Pat and Eileen from Dunworking. But it was a sad day when we left them. We got back off oh, yeah. the River Link and we were at Rufford at the junction on the Leeds-Liverpool Canal on the Rufford branch. And But we set off left from the Rufford branch back up the Leeds and Liverpool Canal towards Wigan. Uh, did the Wigan flight, which was... Wet. Wet. <laughs> and then got up towards one of our favourite parts of the country uh, and another place where people say where's nice to go for a, a higher boat holiday oh definitely the Leeds Liverpool Canal yeah that stretch up between well really Greenberfield uh, where I got all that lovely drone footage yeah and then all the way down the Air Valley towards Skipton through Gargrave it's just beautiful isn't it yeah and anybody that's looking for a, a holiday where they want to see a lot of older architecture and canal history and things like that then Saltair through Bingley through to Skipton, Gargrave out towards Fowl Ridge, Greenberfield it's just beautiful, two week cruise if you get the weather right in the summer absolutely beautiful your boat in Bingley Locks. <laughs> Do you remember the Bingley Five Rise? Flood! We were coming down and one of the lock gates was leaking and it was coming in so fast and it was flooding the engine bay. It was literally a waterfall. So watch out for that. A couple of other boaters have been caught with that as yeah. well.
Coming down the Leeds to Liverpool Canal then from Bingley, we eventually arrived into <laughs> Clues in the name Leeds and Liverpool Canal. Uh, Leeds! Yeah. <laughs> and it's a bit weird because it felt like home, didn't it? Yes. Even though it was really noisy. So you got the railway station right behind the boat, you got a hotel on one side, an apartment block on the other, and pubs all around the other side. So noisy! And the party boat. Oh my god, yeah. But it was nice just for a few days to get back into civilization, yeah. do a bit of shopping. From Leeds down the air and colder towards Castleford, which is another place we used to live. It was just, it feels like home, even though we're on a boat on the water and we're not at home, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean, yeah, it did, it did feel like home. And then taking the boat out of Castleford towards Wakefield and, and back to Stanley Ferry, which is where we first made the decision to get a boat again. That was a weird moment. It was awesome going, passing all the boats through Stanley Ferry. Yeah, all the people that we knew and that we used to say hello to and then we're kind of coming straight through the middle of them, giving them all the royal wave. <laughs> well, well, you was. I was, <laughs> giving them all the royal wave. Uh, 74 locks on the Huddersfield Narrow Canal. I uh, found it easy. For, yeah, if you were <laughs> stood at the back of the boat. Uh, 42 of them on the east side going up. Yeah. And it was about 30 degrees on it that day. It was boiling. And I got heat stroke halfway up, so we had to stop and I went for a skinny dip. Scarth or Sparth Reservoir? Spath. One of them. Sparth. Sparth. Scarth's the baddie of Star Trek, isn't it? <laughs> or is it Star Wars? Home Alone? I don't know. Home Scar. Alone! Oh no, I'm thinking of Lion King. Scar. Scar. That's I don't know. Scar! Yeah, it's Scar, isn't it? That's Scar where on, on Well, this was yeah. Sparth Reservoir. Nothing to do with Lion King. But that cooled me down, got back on the boat, got up towards Marsden, and it, do you remember, it peed it down, it had been so hot. That cooled us down. It did! Standage Tunnel was well, an amazing vlog to make. It, was, it took me like two weeks to make that vlog. It was an amazing vlog. And I loved, I was really scared going in the railway tunnels on my own. And I had to do it because there was all the little edits between the railway tunnels and the canal tunnels. And I was just fascinated, but I was also crapping my pants because it was just pitch black. And there was no, it was awful. It was really, I, I don't mind admitting I was scared. But it was a really good vlog and I loved the history and everything of it. But taking the boat through was the first fingernail biting. F it was fingernail biting. Because the rocks are jagged and a lot of boats get damaged on the paintwork because of it. There's been some quite a bit of damage on some boats going through there. But we got through in one piece, just a couple of marks on the hull which Sean sanded and painted, painted out within like five minutes of getting to the other side. Yeah. I think from there, the 32 locks coming down on the other side it, were, oh, it were lovely. relatively easy, weren't they? Than the 42 coming up. Yeah. That took us down to Ashton, where we had another decision to make. Did we go into Manchester? Which we were planning to do. That was the original plan, wasn't it? Yeah. But we did a left. Something told us to turn left and go up the Peak Forest Canal. 
Oh wow, that was just like, that was the best choice we ever made. It was brilliant. We got to just before Marple Aqueduct and we could see some people on the aqueduct with cameras and stuff and went over and we moored up. So what's going on? Oh, there's a steam train coming. And I got the drone straight out, set a camera up, and it was that's like the for me, that's the iconic photo and bit of video yeah. of the whole Peak Forest Canal. Do you remember we got moored up and we had to do an intro for the video or an outro? I can't remember which one. I can't remember which one it was. And we walked down the side of the aqueduct. Yeah. And I was kind of jumping down the steps. Oh, you mean when we were going down to the river? Yeah, and I smacked you in the back of the head. <laughs> And I think it's from Marple Junction down to the end at Whaley Bridge and Bugsworth Basin that yeah. is just my favourite stretch. And it's only a few miles long, but there's so many moorings and the views are just amazing. The views are spectacular. Yeah. For September, the weather was gorgeous. It was like in the mid 20s. Yeah, it was like just middle of summer. And it was the first time I went for a naked ramble. It was. Stripped off and walked down, well, walked up. Uh, Kinder Low End, which is just over there. No snow on it back then. No, there wasn't. And we were out walking for most of the day, and it was amazing, absolutely amazing. Just the, the feeling, the exhilaration is just, wow, just brilliant, and I love that. We've been rattling on for about half an hour, haven't we? Who has? I've been rattling on for about half an hour. Uh, we've only got about 500 miles into our 1,000 mile narrowboat journey. 500 miles, I would cruise 500 miles. Da -da -da -da. No. <laughs> <laughs> Which one would you be? Uh, proclaimer I'd, one. I'd be the one with the glasses. <laughs> glasses what are they called? Charlie and? Proclaimer one, proclaimer two. Charlie and Craig, I think it was, wasn't it? Something anyway, like we digress. No. We're halfway through our 1,000 mile narrowboat journey, but we have to leave you here because we've run out of time. <sighs> so join us next time when Sean forces me to leave the Peak Forest Canal and we continue our adventure down towards Birmingham, Stratford-upon-Avon, the River Thames, and the best bit of all in central London, under Tower Bridge. Oh, ah. spoilers. Shh. Don't tell them. So join us, for, I think next week's episode's better. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know we've already recorded it, do they? No. Uh, so join us for that next week. If you've enjoyed this vlog, we hope you have. Uh, please subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And hit the like button, the thumbs up. Thank you. And if you'd like YouTube to let you know every time we release a new video, hit the notification bell. It's four o'clock every Friday. Yes. Isn't it? Yeah, you should know by now. Don't miss next week. It's going to be ace. <laughs> See you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>
Come on. <laughs> I'm not singing. Oh. Da 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 da. 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 Da 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 da.